Okay, we have here today another integral. This one's from the MIT integration, B2013, problem number nine. We have the integral from zero to one, natural log x, dx. Okay, now of course, this would be a very simple integral that we're used to dealing with. And actually, we could just remember the formula for this, but the interesting thing actually is the graph. Just notice looking at our graph of ln x between the bounds from zero to one, clearly this whole area is gonna be negative, but, but notice around zero, this curve's going off to minus infinity. So it's not really clear looking at the graph what this area is going to be or if this is even going to converge. And I think rather than just writing down the answer, let's just do out the integration by parts for this. So I'm going to use the DI method or tabular integration. I'll just kind of create a, just going to kind of create a one right there so that we have two things. And I'll differentiate natural log x and I'll integrate the one. So we'll just go ahead and do this. So the derivative of ln x is just going to be one over x. Integral over here a one, that's just x. So putting this together, we have part of the solution on the diagonal. So we'll put that down. We have x ln x. And then this part's going to be an integral. So we're integrating. So we'll bring the minus out front, and we're integrating x times 1 over x, but that's just 1. So we're integrating 1 dx from 0 to 1. And this part here, we're going to need to evaluate from 0 to 1 as well. So now coming down here, we'll just kind of copy this part over. So we'll have our x ln x from 0 to 1. Here, integrating this, this is just going to be minus x evaluated from zero to one. But when we evaluate this at zero, it's just gonna be zero. So this part is actually just gonna be minus one. And then we still need to evaluate this piece over here. And now this here is the part where I'm gonna to wanna to do this carefully because we have that problem at zero. So at zero, that's where I'm gonna to wanna to use a limit. But first, let's just plug in. So plugging in one, we're gonna have one, natural log of one here, minus, then plugging in zero, we're gonna have zero times natural log of zero, and we'll have this minus one on the end. But now natural log of one is zero, so this piece is going away. But then over here, like we saw earlier, natural log at zero, this piece is going to minus infinity. So we have the situation here where we're multiplying zero times minus infinity. This here, this is an indeterminate form. So what we'll do is we'll just break this out over here as a limit. We're looking at the limit as x goes to zero on the positive side, and we're just looking at x ln x. And like we just saw, this is indeterminate, so we can't really deal with the limit in this form. But what I can do is try to set up Le Hopital's rule. What I can do is I can write this x, I can actually put it into the denominator and write it as one over x in the denominator, and we'll have our ln x up here. And then looking at it this way, this piece here is going to minus infinity. This piece here is going to positive infinity. And since we have an infinity over an infinity case, this allows us to use Le Hopital's rule. Now what Le Hopital's rule allows us to do for this indeterminate form is we can take the limit again of the derivative of the numerator and the denominator and just reevaluate it. So let's bring that, we'll bring that over here. So we're taking the limit again from x as it approaches zero from the positive side. This just means we're looking at the right side of the y-axis like we saw on the graph earlier. And then here, first we wanna take the derivative in the numerator. So derivative of ln x is one over x. Take the derivative here, derivative of one over x is gonna be minus one over x squared. But now if we just plug in zero plus now, we still have a problem. But what we can do is we can actually rearrange this and rewrite it. So if I just flip this and bring the x squared into the numerator and write it as x squared over x, then we get some cancellation and canceling one of these with one of these. But now just to make it clear, we're evaluating the limit as x approaches zero plus of just minus x. But minus x, this is just continuous. We've got no problems now, so we can just plug in our zero. Limit as x approaches zero of minus x, this is just gonna be zero. But that's not the solution to the problem, that's just the solution to this limit here. So we found this is zero, so this here is zero. So now we can just plug this zero back in and finish it. So just to recap what we're doing, we have a zero here minus zero, so this whole thing goes away and we're just left with our final solution of just minus one. Okay, so there you have it, good problem from MIT 2013. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.